morning. I'm Alex Dengel. Good morning. I'm Julia Dengel. And we're your acolytes this morning. It's our job to light a candle and invite you to do the same. And as we light candles in our homes, we remember the words of Jesus that we recite at baptism. Let your light so shine for others that they may see your good works and glorify God in heaven. Welcome. We invite you to prepare your hearts for worship. Good morning. Welcome to Lutheran Memorial Church. My name is Susan Swanson, and this is Felix. Good morning and welcome. This is Sunday, August 23rd. Welcome to worship with us. Good morning, everyone. Today I miss seeing your faces, but it is still good to be together in worship. As we get started, I want to uh, share some news with you about some staff changes that we have going on at LMC. One of the things that has changed a lot, you all know, in the last few months, five months or so, is how we make music together. A lot of you know that public health recommendations during these times of COVID-19 suggest that we refrain from singing together when we are all gathered in one place. And with that knowledge, we have decided that we're gonna furlough our vocal choirs for the foreseeable future. That means we'll start them up again when things turn back to a, a more normal state, but for now, we're going to put them on, on hold. And with that, our music director, Aaron Dupree, is going to take a full voluntary furlough from his job with us. Then also, our youth director, Don, let me know that he is resigning. I know that we will part ways with Don in, on very good terms. Don has a lot of love for the church and especially the youth, and we have a lot of love for Don. We will send Don into this new chapter of life with all of our love and encouragement. So Don will meet with the youth one last time in person this week, and then next Sunday will be both Don and Aaron's last Sunday with us. So while my heart is full, very full with these two departures, I'm also very happy to share that while we will also celebrate Holy Communion today, we have a baptism this morning. So in just a little bit, we will baptize Augustus Freevert and welcome him into the family of God. And I am so very excited for that. So today is also the 11th week of the 12 weeks of our summer series, Unraveled, where we've been looking at different biblical characters and how their lives have unraveled and what God has stitched back together with the unraveled threads. So today we will hear a story about a man named Job who experienced great highs and terrible lows in his life. And all the while he searched fervently for God. As we begin today, will you please pray our call to worship with me? Come in from the night. It is a new day, and this is where love lives. Take off your coat. Let the weight fall off your shoulders. For here you are known. Here you are loved. Come in from the rain. We can do anything together we can survive together. When the world unravels from under your feet, come in, come in, come in. God is here. You are home. You will never be alone. Let us worship the God who weaves us together. Amen. Now I welcome our youth band as they begin with our first song, Bless the Lord.
So we have another baptism this week that we're very excited about. Our friend Gus Freverett is getting baptized. Um, so you'll see that we've asked the congregation to once again participate in an art project. Uh, so you can write your blessings or color or draw some blessings for, for Gus on a raindrop. Um, email me, deaconess, or family at lmcchicago.org if you need a copy of that raindrop and you can't find it in news and notes or any of the other places that I will post it. But this little bug and I wanted to, well, I wanted to, and she's along for the ride, read for you uh, a little poem from a book that was given to us by our friend, Pastor Chris Michaelis, a long time ago. What do you think? It's from the section um, called about water and uh, font. Are you ready? Under warm sunshine, a pond of water rests, calm and serene. The blue sky inhabits the middle of the pond, and its sides reflect the greenery. Spotted with the yellow and the red, the red and the violet, the water, the sky, the vegetation, hand in hand convey harmony and peace. Then comes the splash, and a tremendous stirring surges, reflections distort, giving way to a rushing flow of ripples, ripples concentric, ripples innumerable, all fleeing from the wound. Time elapses, ripples fade, reflections regain their shape, and once again emerges the pond, smooth and tranquil. By Yusuf O. Kassam. Blessings on your day. today comes to you from the 28th chapter of Job. But do people know where to find wisdom? Where can they find understanding? No one knows where to find it, for it's not found among the living. It's not here, says the ocean, nor is it here, says the sea. It cannot be bought with gold. It cannot be purchased with silver. It's worth more than all the gold of Afir and greater than precious Anks or Lapis Lazuli. Wisdom is more valuable than gold 
and crystal. It cannot be purchased with jewels mounted in fine gold. Coral and jasper are worthless in trying to get it. The price of wisdom is far above rubies. Precious peridot from Ethiopia can't be exchanged for it. It's worth more than the purest gold. But where do people know where to find wisdom? Where can they find understanding? It's hidden from the eyes of all humanity. Even the sharp-eyed birds in the sky can't discover it. Destruction and death say we've heard only rumors of where wisdom can be found. God alone understands the way to wisdom for he knows where it can be found. For he looks throughout the whole earth and sees everything under the heavens. He decides how hard the winds should blow and how much rain should fall. He made the laws for the rain and laid out a path for the lightning. Then God saw wisdom and evaluated it. He set it in place and examined it thoroughly and this is what he says to all of humanity. The fear of the Lord is true wisdom. To forsake evil is real understanding. This is the word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you today from God, our wisdom and our peace. Amen. In today's story, a man named Job has lost everything that he holds dear. He's lost his home, all his property, his family, his wife, his children, and his health. He is sick, poor, and miserable. His life has completely unraveled, and now he's trying to make sense of it. As he thinks about God's role in all of it, he realizes that he has this sort of if-then view of the world. Like, if I do certain things, then God will reward me. And on the flip side, if I sin, God will punish me. It's a kind of quid pro quo way of looking at his relationship with God. So all of this terrible suffering that he is experiencing, he rationalizes it must be some sort of payback for some past sin that he is now paying for. Honestly, his initial question makes sense to me. Everything seems to kind of fall into that quid pro quo category, right? If I study hard and do my homework, then I will get good grades and get into the high school that I long to get into, which will get me into a better college, get a scholarship, have a better life, all of the things. It's a logical way of thinking. If we eat well and exercise and meditate, then we will never get sick. If we raise our kids and do everything right with them, then they'll turn out to be stable adults. If we put in the hours at, at work on the project, then we will be rewarded. If we go to couples therapy and put in the effort, then our marriage will survive. It makes easy, logical sense that our current circumstances are explained by our past choices. I go back to this again and again. But Job, after a while, doesn't buy it. He says he has been a model for righteous living. And normally I would roll my eyes at this sort of declaration of someone who says they have been a model for righteous living, this declaration of perfection. But I think this scripture is trying to teach us something here. If God is powerful and in control and all of that, how do we explain the really hard things in life? Like when someone is laid off, even though they've done everything right, or someone gets terribly sick, or we come very close to losing everything. Sometimes life unravels a little bit and sometimes it unravels a whole lot and it doesn't make sense and we want to understand why. We hear scripture searching for understanding too. 
several times it says, where can we find understanding? Where can we find wisdom? At times we work very hard to answer this question. We long to explain suffering so we can get to the other side of it and get through it. And we optimistically say things like, well, every setback is a part of some sort of plan that will eventually be a step forward. Like for example, we're all going to learn something from this COVID nightmare that our nation is living right now and that will redeem everything, right? If we can explain it, then maybe we can find a way out from under the things that bruise us and even pull and rip our lives apart. In Greek mythology, King Sisyphus was doomed to have to push this huge boulder up a hill and roll it up every day, only to have it roll back down on him just as he reached the top. For eternity, he would discover day after day that not every burden can be shouldered. There is a lot of change and upheaval around us right now. Maybe you're feeling fine and okay in the midst of everything, but I know that some of you aren't. Some of us are shaking our heads trying to figure out how we are going to pull off the next school year with our kids. Some of us really want to go back to school and see our friends and hang out with them. Some of us are supervisors and we need to lay people off in the next few weeks and it's terrible. Some of us have tension in our families. Some of us are unemployed. Some of us are terribly lonely. Some of us are sick. Many of us are weary. In our Bible story today, Job never could make sense of the suffering that he endured. He sits there with the threads of his life unraveled in his hands and he tries to figure it out. The end of our, our reading today gives an answer to that question, what is wisdom? The fear of the Lord is wisdom. Scripture answers itself. Now the word fear in Hebrew, yira, literally means awesome. Lyle Garrity writes that true wisdom lies in breathless reverence for God's mystery and expansiveness, for God's presence that is beyond what we can control or reason. God is simply bigger than our little brains can understand. But one thing is certain, in the midst of the suffering, in the midst of whatever your Good Friday might be. And that is that God is there. God is with us. God was with Job and God is with us. When we walk through the valley of the shadow, we will fear no evil for God is with us and God comforts us. Now, I don't know if any of us are going to stand triumphant on the mountain of distance learning in nine months and say, we did it. That was great. I don't know if our loved ones will happily all find meaningful, well-paying work tomorrow. I don't know if getting a handle on our anxiety is always as easy as we want to think. I don't know if there's always a cure for every illness. But I do know that God is with us. And it's not just like, yeah, here's my bud, God. God's with me. God's, God with us is more than that. God with us is God filling in the very places where our foundations have cracked. God with us is softening us to create a gentler world. God with us is filing away our roughest edges and cultivating compassion in our hearts so that the heartache of this world is more bearable. Today we will baptize little Augustus Fruvert. I wish I could say to you, little Gus, that now you are baptized and you will be able to magically overcome whatever challenge comes before you. But I won't say that. 
I will say, little Gus, that today you become a part of this family of faith called the church. Let me tell you, we are imperfect and sometimes we are not our best selves. But with God's help, we are doing our best to radiate love into a broken world and now you are a part of that. I can't promise you, Gus, that you won't face heartache in this life. But when you do, this community around you today and this church will be here to remind you that God is with you and in those very cracks of your broken heart. Now, Gus, I cannot explain how it all works, but I can say that God is expansive and mysterious and alive in this world in ways that we can't even come close to understanding. Through God's love, little Gus, you will make this aching world a softer and gentler place. Through carrying God's light, you will bring compassion and mercy. Through seeking God's heart, you will usher in God's justice simply by the way you live your life and you will bless the life around you. Today, sweet child, you remind us, your congregation and your family of all of that. God bless you, little guy, and God's peace be with all of us. Amen. gather together to celebrate the baptism of Augustus Charles Freebert. And here he is, ready to fall asleep, but he's here with us, hi buddy. And we have grandma and grandpa and some cousins and some dear friends who are godparents here. 
So everyone has gathered from far and wide to celebrate your baptism, little guy, and we are very happy to be together. Today, through the ritual sacrament of water and word, Gus will be claimed by God and welcomed into community as a beloved child of God. I know it's great! Welcomed into, into the community and made in the image of divinity. We're really excited about that part. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. So Johnny and Joanna, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Gus baptized? As you bring Augustus to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with these responsibilities. To live with him among God's faithful people, bring him to the word of God in the Holy Communion, teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, and nurture him in faith and prayer, so that Augustus may learn to trust God to share Jesus through words and actions, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace? Do you promise to help Augustus grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, answer, I do. Godparents, Chrissy and Cameron, do you promise to nurture Gus in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? Yeah. People of God, people of God who are who are at home and people of God in the congregation who are here around us, do you promise to support Augustus and yeah, pray for yeah, him yeah. in his new life in Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. Parents, Joanna and Johnny, and then Godparents, Christine Cameron, I ask you to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. I renounce them. Please uh, follow along if you like, if you have the, the book with you. And some of you may know this part by just by memory. I ask you now uh, to, to follow along as we profess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to heaven. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the blessed. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is it's right, right to give our, our thanks and, and praise. praise. Holy God, holy and merciful, tender and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. You are the fire of rebirth. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for cloud and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. Our life is born in you. You are the fountain of resurrection. At this font, holy God, we pray. Praise to you for the waters of baptism and for your word that saves us in this water. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all of creation. Illumine our days, enliven our bones, dry our tears, wash away the sin within us, and drown the evil around us. 
satisfy all our thirst with your living water. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Okay, little Gus, this is your big moment. You want to come forward with your mom and dad? Do you want to touch the water? Do you want to feel the water? What do you think of that? It's pretty great, huh? You could come up and touch the water too if you want, or maybe with your mom and dad later. So we're going to dump some of that water on top of you, Augustus. Augustus Charles Freevert, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen. Now we're going to make the sign of the cross on your forehead with this oil, little guy. Augustus, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your children new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Gus with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. We have a blanket that's around here somewhere. There it is. And some of you might remember we brought this blanket to Gus, wow, probably a good six weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago, on the date he was originally going to be baptized. So they brought it back with him today. We said, bring it back when you're baptized. And we will remember that clothed with Christ in baptism, we gave you this blanket several months ago, which was made for you by your church community here at LMC. May this blanket be a reminder of the love of your congregation that surrounds you and holds you and supports you even from afar in our own living rooms and our kitchen tables. And we also have a candle for you. And we'll give that to your godparents. So Gus, we give you this candle as a reminder of Jesus, light of the world, who shines in even the darkest of places. Gus, you are a bearer of this light. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify God in heaven. I now present to you Augustus Charles Freevert, child of God, sibling in Christ. Let us welcome him with applause. Together in one body by the Spirit of Christ, let us pray for the church and the world, responding to each petition of Hear us, O God, with Your mercy is great. Bless the church that despite the hardships experienced during this pandemic, Christians around the globe will stand firm on the rock who is Christ. Support pastors, deacons, and congregational committees during this difficult time. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Bless the earth that it be saved from ecological harm. 
Restore all lands and seas to the beauty and vigor that you intend. Protect animals whose habitat is endangered. Train us to be gardeners of your creation. We pray for those suffering the effects of destructive summer storms and scorching heat. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Bless the leaders of nations that they govern their people with integrity and attend to the needs of people who are poor. Guard the United States from violence. Give clear purpose to protesters and to police. Inspire our political parties to conduct the election season with honesty and respect for all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Bless students, teachers, CPS, and district employees, and school administrators. Uphold university faculty and college students as they begin a new year. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Bless all who are in need, all who have tested positive for the virus, the sick, and the dying. We pray for the unemployed, for medical workers, for those seeking a vaccine, for those who are overwhelmed with anxiety about the future, for those in our midst at LMC struggling through health challenges, cancer, palliative care, and hospice. We pray for those we name out loud here or silently in our hearts. Mary, John, Melissa. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Finally, we pray also for ourselves that with Christ as our rock, who is steady during each storm, hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hello, we are the Saavedra Reinfeldt family. I am Diana. I'm Sebastian. I am Daniel. Oh, the peace of Christ be with you. Friede sei mit dir. Que la paz esté con ustedes. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be with you. Today, we give you thanks for your offering, which helps sustain this ministry. For the many ways that you give and serve one another, I thank God. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for communion. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And now let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table of God is ready. It is a table where all are welcome 
No matter our stories, our sorrows, our joys, our griefs, our struggles, our challenges, our hopes, our fears, all of it is welcome at this table. So come to this table, you who are feeling unraveled, and you who feel that God is stitching something new together in you, you who are hopeful, and you who are despairing. We come however we find ourselves this morning, for we know that God is here. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Please come. is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may it strengthen you and give you courage and peace as you go from this place of worship. Now receive this blessing. You can raise your hands with me if you like. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you her peace.